Hey guys, absolutely bizarre, mentally weird, but murderous, Lori Vallow has filed her appeal. Her children, of course, absolutely destroyed and left as garbage. That's okay, but the idea of her spending the rest of this mortal life in prison is too much for her to bear. So her attorneys are pursuing an appeal on her behalf. Let's look at their filing and see what they think are the critical mistakes for why her verdict should be thrown out. All right. This is a pretty short document, so this ride won't be too long. Here they say, we're giving you notice that she appeals. She has a right to appeal. Okay, no problem with that. And here's a preliminary statement of the issues on appeal. And, of course, she's reserving her rights to think up more things. Did the court err in its order dated April 11, 2022, finding that after spending 10 months in a mental hospital, Fallow was competent to stay in trial? Okay, we'll see about that. Competent, not the same thing as insane at the time of the crime. Idaho not having what you would think of as a normal insanity defense anyway, reserving for that more on the punishment side. But was she competent to be in the courtroom assisting her defense, understanding what was going on around her? Apparently not for 10 months, but then the court said, yeah, she could do it. At least from what I was able to glean from the trial, I think she was competent to be there. Uh, you know, what her mental state was at the time of the crime, that's different, but whatever. Uh, they'll have to make their case on that. I, I didn't see an issue with that. All right. Did the court, though, err in its order dated November 15th, where it denied the defense expert's request to send her back to the mental hospital rather than proceed to trial? I doubt it. Was her constitutional and statutory right to a speedy trial violated by the government's repeated request for a continuance? I doubt it. There are good cause exceptions for that. Lots of issues with trial scheduling around some of the times of this stuff. Were her constitutional and statutory right to a speedy trial violated by the court's trial setting? I doubt it. Did the court err in denying defense challenges for cause of trial jurors due to bias or hardship during jury selection? Maybe they'll have some specific case of that, but I mean, I don't blame them for bringing it up, but I doubt it. Did the government commit fundamental reversible error in its opening statement to the jury? Unlikely. Did the court err in allowing the government to produce evidence of other crimes or acts against the defendant under Rule 404B? Probably not an issue. Did the court err in allowing the government to exceed the scope of its order regarding other crimes or acts against the defendant under Rule 404B? That sounds better, but, you know, still, I doubt it. Did the court err in allowing the government to amend the grand jury indictment two years after the indictment was filed without sending the case back to the grand jury? It kind of depends on whether the crime has changed or not, because if you're changing what the crime is, then you're not really representing the grand jury's indictment, but some kind of technical amendments can be made to indictments that, that don't necessarily require it to go back. So I don't know the details of that. Therefore, I'm going to just say I doubt it, but I wouldn't put money on it. Did the court err in allowing the jury to hear statements of co-conspirators, but then rule in jury instructions that the government need not prove they were part of the conspiracy? Uh, when the grand jury indictment puts the defendant on notice that she is charged with a conspiracy involving five or more people, can the trial court ignore that finding and instead, instead proceed with standard conspiracy jury instructions? Did the government commit fundamental reversible error in its closing statement to the jury? Did the government err when it granted without a hearing? The government's objection to the defense request for the court to review all mitigation evidence submitted by the defense for sentencing. Should a new sentencing hearing be held due to the sentencing court not reviewing all mitigation evidence submitted by the defense? Nope. Did the court... Sentencing court abused its discretion by ordering her to serve three consecutive fixed life sentences without parole. No. Did the court... Sentencing court abuse its discretion when it ordered her when she's found indigent and qualified for a public defender nevertheless to be... Uh, subject to a fine of $165,000. Uh, nah, I don't think that's an issue. They'd probably have to change the law for that to be an issue. There's a portion of the record that is sealed, including all the mental health reports. And so, you know, they're going to want some of this stuff. So, uh, okay, so back to the $165,000. That's the last preliminary assignment of error. And the rest of it is just things that they want. And because she's broke, they want it for free. And so they can prepare the appeal in greater detail. And, of course, you'd have to actually see the brief and the things that they have to know whether there's any merit to anything they're saying or not. But nothing on the face of it strikes me as something that is reversible error. But you'd have to know more details to know for sure. That's her appeal in a nutshell. Thanks. Bye. Bye.